Casey here with 911 Motorsports. In this video, I'm going to be setting up the tube jig to represent this simple top hoop with this bumper here. And once I get it all adjusted like it is right now, I'm then going to take it down, copy it, and make this tube that fits pretty much the same. What do you know? <laughs> so stay tuned and see how we uh, make it happen. So I'm going to start by getting some measurements of the lengths that I think I want in between each bend. And then I'm going to measure about what the cope angle is going to be. I like to write numbers down so I don't have to remember them. We got a 12 inch leg, 20 inches between bends, and a 20 degree cope. Then I'm going to grab some pieces of the tube jig and start to put it together. I got the short hinge with a cope. Turns out it's a little too short. So I'm going to switch over and use the large hinges, set them next to each other and make sure they're short enough to fit, which they are. Then we'll start by putting the cope on there and take out the extra extension tube, put the hinges together, add the last cope, and then we can put it on the vehicle. Now I can adjust it to fit just right. Use a block to space it off the hood, tweak it around to where it's nice and level maybe add a little height to it, see how that looks. Then I can grab another piece and get an idea where the headlight hoop's gonna go, see what that looks like. I don't like the height, so I can move it back down. So another nice feature of the jig is you get to check things. That's looking better, but I want the cope right next to the bend. So I'm gonna extend the center hoop a little bit. Then I'm gonna knock it back down to where it's level. Now I can bring the bender a little closer to the cope, and that's gonna look really good with the final tube radius in there. Now I can line up the rotation for the copes using the slots and the tube jig and eyeballing those with the center of the tube. Then lock the whole jig down, measure the cope angle, and we're good. Now I can measure the final numbers. Ended up being 21 inches between bends, a little longer. The legs are 11 and a quarter, which are a little shorter and the cope angle is 21 degrees. Then I can measure the overall length of the tube to bend, add a few inches, came out to be 48. Next, I need to use an angle finder to figure out what the bend angle is. Then I can figure out the tangent point or start of bend by holding my angle finder against the die and marking wherever the two contact each other. This works because every die is the center line radius of the tube. So every contact point is the tangent or start a bend. I like to bend the easy way. So I'm gonna be bending from the center out. I'm gonna measure the center line of the tube and then line that up with the center of the jig. Next, I can mark the center line of each bend, which is pretty easy just to eyeball since they're right next to each other. Then I can measure the tangent point from my mark to the inside center of the angle finder and transfer that to the tube. That number ended up being four and one eighth of an inch from tangent point to center line of bend. Lastly, I'm gonna add the bend offset for my bender, which is the distance to the mark on my bender where I start the bend. That's the easy way to do a bend layout by transferring the center line to tangent point using an angle finder. Then I'm gonna transfer the bend angle to a larger angle finder. Okay, load this in the bender. You got center line, tangent, and the start mark that lines up to the little mark of my bender. Uh, this is also the, the U strap that holds it in. Add a little oil and start bending. I just changed this on my bender uh, for the video so you could actually see a little more. Then I use my angle finder and just bend it until the legs of the tube line up with the angle finder. Now I can check the bend by setting the tube jig on top and using a speed square to make sure everything's square and then just looking at my marks. Everything's looking good, so now I can transfer my start mark to the other side of the tube for the second bend. Load my tube just like before, center line, tangent, and then the start mark, and then the transferred one to the other side, lined up with my mark in the strap. Now, since this is just zero rotation, I can eyeball and make sure the, the first bend is in line with the die and go ahead and make the bend. I like using a manual bender because I can actually feel when the tube bends at the very end of the bend, so it helps to make it accurate. When I'm using an angle finder like this, when I relax the machine, it actually unsprings back and so I can really verify it's the right angle. 
Okay, got both bends done. Now I'm gonna set the jig back on top, use my square to make sure it's all nice and square and things are looking good. Everything looks good. So while it's here, I can actually just transfer where the copes go. I don't even need to measure the cope distance. I can just line it up and eyeball where the cope is. I'm actually making two marks here. One is where the notch is gonna start and then the other one is where I saw cut it. Okay, the last thing I need is rotation of coat, and this I do want to measure. Use a flat bar, stick it in the slots of the tube jig, and then I can just set an angle finder on there and measure it. Or I can use my fancy rotation gauge and do the same thing. Then I want to transfer the rotation marks onto the tube using that rotation gauge, and I'm using the far side of the gauge. It's got a little slot in it to make sure the Sharpie mark is exactly in the center of the tube. Rotation came out to be about eight degrees. Now I can set up my notcher to make the cope. Start by adjusting the angle of the cope, get that set. Then I'll set the distance to where I want the cope according to my mark, and then use my rotation mark to get it close. Then I like to, I still like to use a rotation gauge to actually make sure I'm eight degrees like I need to be. Lock it down and make the cope. I like to use an air drill because if it ever grabs, it doesn't rip my arm off. And always good to use a lot of lube too. Okay, then I'm gonna flip it over and line up for the second cope, adjust it, check rotation, all that stuff, and then make the second cope. And there it's going pretty quick. We got it at ludicrous speed. And here we have the final tube with the jig sitting on top. You can see how everything lines up to each other all in the same plane. The one difference is that the final tube obviously has a bend, which has a radius, which is a little different than the jig. That's about the only real difference. Copes are all lined up and everything. And now that I got this tube all done and tacked in place, I can set up the tube jig for the next tube like I've already done over here. So make sure to stay tuned for the next video where I set up the tube jig and then copy it like that. Check out our website, 911motorsports.net for more information. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you liked the video. Make sure to stay tuned for the next one. And uh, follow us on social media platforms as well.